<sighs> Done. That was way harder than I was hoping. So this training week started on Saturday. I know, strange day to start the week, but it just works out with some hills because if it's good enough for the Ingebrigtsens, it's good enough for me. Now hills obviously help you practice um, strength and speed and your form and I find them really, really useful and I've been neglecting this side of training for a little bit uh, recently. So I really wanted to get out there and get some hills and some strength in at the start of this training block. So I did 12 hills on Saturday and they were a good run, but that man are they hard. Uh, Sunday I was a bit torn between going longer or shorter with some pace. Uh, luckily we had a big dump of snow which uh, put pay to any plans that I had to run fast so I just stayed on my feet. Um, again I was still playing it by ear and I got to an hour and a half and didn't feel great so I pushed it to two hours and then just called it a day there so I was happy with that. Monday uh, was a cross training day and so I took things nice and easy and then Tuesday was my first ever double threshold day. Now it might seem a bit strange to introduce double threshold training when you're over 50 and maybe it's a bit crazy to do that but I'm going to give it a go. I did a nice gentle introduction to double threshold training with the idea of seeing if my body can tolerate it and then using that as the basis for increasing those types of uh, runs uh, as I progressed towards 2.30. Nothing too extreme. I did six minute miling on the treadmill so it was nice and relaxed. Not trying to kill myself, just making sure that I'm at sort of tempo effort or threshold effort and seeing how that feels and it felt okay. So in the evening I did five by three minutes with a two minute jog recovery. I started the first one at 10 so that's six minute miling which is 3.43 a kilometer. And then I did 10.2, 10.4, 10.6, and the last one was in 10.8. And I was happy with that, nice relaxed effort, and I was running within myself. Wednesday, I did a nice gentle run around the streets of Calgary, did just under an hour, and I did uh, just under eight miles, or about 12 and a half K, at a nice gentle pace. So it is Thursday, February the 29th, and no one has proposed to me yet, but the day is still young. And we are on the way to the athletics track in Calgary, and I'm gonna do some Yasso 800s. So Yasso 800s are obviously just 10 800s. You do equal rest, so if you're running the 800s in three minutes, you get three minutes rest. And this was made famous by Bart Yasso, and he seemed to think that um, whatever he did as his average for the 10 800s would be his marathon time, so if he did two minutes and 55 seconds per um, 800 meters as the average then his marathon time would be two hours and 55 minutes now obviously that's not scientific in any way but he seemed to think it worked and if it's good enough for him it's good enough for me so I'm going to give it a go now obviously if I want to get under 240 in Carmel I need to get 239 or quicker as the average for my 800. So I'm looking at two minutes and 39 seconds per 800 as the average. Now I've been, it's sort of lunchtime and I've been looking at the weather. It's crazy living in Calgary. It's super windy. So I need to get that out there now with the sandbagging. It is really, really windy. Gusts up to 60 kilometers an hour, which is 40 miles an hour. And um, so that might be an issue. Um, also, I'm not yet at the track, but I've left it until one o'clock because it's been sunny out and I'm hoping that the ice on the track has melted enough for me to get a, at least one lane clear. And then the final thing is that it is about to drop by 20 degrees Celsius. So I wanted to get out before the temperature drops. But it is a good job I got my session done when I did. Look at that, this is two hours after I finished my session. So, hopefully I've timed this just right. So there are some days when you just have to run to the conditions and this was definitely one of them. The back straight there where I'm about to run into was super windy. And so the first uh, 100 meters were just battling against the wind. And so when I was not running into the wind, I was running 
you know, decent pace, probably 230-ish, 232, 233, 234. But into the wind, my pace just dropped. And so it became clear very quickly that I'd have to run by effort. So uh, my times were 243, 242. I missed the third one, annoyingly. I pressed the wrong button on my watch. 245, 244, 243, 240, 240, 240, and 239. So the average of all of those is about 242. I haven't done the maths, but it's there or thereabouts. It definitely wasn't where I wanted it to be. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just got to run to the conditions and you got to make sure that you're not demoralized by looking at the watch too much. I nearly took the watch off so that I wasn't completely obsessed by it. But eventually I did uh, keep doing it and I'm glad I hung on. They definitely got quicker as I got into the session. So not where I wanted to be at all, but the conditions were not conducive to the type of session that I was trying to run. Friday, I'm going to do some more cross training and that will be the end of week two. And I'll be six weeks uh, before the Carmel Marathon, which is a bit worrying, really. Uh, the body has struggled a little bit more than I was expecting it to. And it's taken me a while to get back to a place where I feel like I'm going to be handling this training quite well. So we did some sp faster stuff this week and I was OK and I was glad how I tolerated that. I just got to see how my body handles the extra miles and the big mileage that's coming up in the next few weeks. And hopefully that will hold it well so that will stand me in good stead for the Carmel Marathon in six weeks time. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm nearly at a thousand. Let's see if I can get there. Uh, don't forget to mash the like button and I'll see you on the next one.